Welcome back everybody to another Motobot video and in the studio today we've got this beautiful looking bike it's the BMW R12 9T. Now it basically follows on from the R9 T which was already one of my favorite retro bikes on the market and so the question is with all the updates and tweaks that they've made for 2024 is it now enough to make this bike the king of that retro market? Well in this video we're going to take it for a spin to find out. Now look, I'm navigating with Kalimoto today, which is a brilliant app that's specific to motorcycles. And they use their own dedicated algorithm to seek out the best roads in terms of, you know, corners and twisties and how engaging they are to ride. Now, not only can you plan a sort of point to point route where it avoids the boring straight roads and gets you to your destination with the most fun possible but also if you're doing a round trip just going out for a ride you can set a distance a general compass heading and it'll make a route for you that should be pretty flipping good for biking so look if you're going out touring this is a great way to find the best roads in places that you've never been before but what i really love about it is the fact that you can find new roads you didn't know about in your local area different routes mix it up and so it's pretty much always on my bars now when i go out for a ride so look a huge thanks to kalamoto for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video and if you want a discount code there's a couple down in the description one for a free trial and then if you decide you like it there's also a discount on an annual membership so look let's crack on with the stuff that i really really like about this bike and one has to be that mid-range and shove. I think it's been quite a few years since I last rode the sort of um, top of the line R9T. And yeah, I'd sort of forgotten just how punchy and fast it can be. You know, you've got well over 100 horsepower on this bike, which is right up there with the quickest bikes in this sort of retro segment and also bags of torque and it's really predictable through the rev range. And yeah, it's just an air-cooled boxer twin you might not think of as like a particularly performant engine but there's plenty of fun to be had on this bike there's also a pretty significant difference i would say between the three riding modes that you got on this bike so there is rain which will be the most um gentle road is kind of the default in the middle and then dynamic really livens things up so much so to the point where you know we've got a few damp patches on the road today uh, so I'll have to keep my eyes peeled. Effortless up to 60 and beyond. And then also, I think this is a uh, first for the R9T, or the R12 9T as I should call it now, but this bike actually has the optional quick shifter fitted. And although on other boxers like the 1300 GS, I wouldn't say it's necessarily that slick, I actually think it feels a bit better on this bike. Really quite nice actually. And it snicks between the gears with no effort and I wouldn't necessarily say a retro bike needs a quick shifter, but it is good. All this stuff, the powerful engine, snappy throttle, decent quick shifter, combines to make this bike really quite swift and puts it up there with the other larger capacity sporty retros as one of the fastest and most entertaining. But on top of that, it also has its own distinct sound and feel owing to that flat boxer layout. It wobbles to life in its own specific way and the sound is pure signature BMW. Now, will it be for everyone? Probably not. You might prefer the snarl of the Triumph's 270 degree crank parallel twin, the Revy inline four of the Kawasaki, or the angry triple in the XSR 900. But for those of you who do like a boxer, the feel of it, the way it delivers its power, then it can only be a big positive, and it really is a sensation that's very specific out of this bunch to the R12 9T. Now, they have reworked the chassis on this bike, I think to make it a little bit simpler to produce there's a different frame design uh, but in terms of the handling characteristics it feels really similar to that previous gen r9 t and i'd probably say that's a good thing i mean that was a great handling bike as well and this is just more of the same i think they've shed a tiny bit of weight uh, but how it feels is 99% the same now it's not super light or super flickable but nor is it particularly cumbersome either and I think it's just a really nice 
sweet spot balance and uh, well suited to a naked kind of retro bike. And what I will say is it does have a lot of quality in the componentry, like the brakes, for example. You've got these radial four pot Brembos up front and they really do have plenty, plenty, plenty of stopping power. And then we've got an upside down fork from Marzocchi, the um, shock as well. Nice ride quality to it. Uh, lots of adjustability as well if you need it. And yeah, just pleasant to ride. Makes me feel quite confident, I think. Quick, engaging, fun, but it never really feels like a handful or like it's gone too far. Now I've also got to say, from a features and techie perspective, it really does feel quite well appointed for this sort of a retro category of bike. Helped, I think, quite a lot by this mini TFT display. This is new as an optional upgrade for this generation of R1290. And while it is little, and I guess they've done that for aesthetic purposes, uh, you know, it is very clear, visible, easy to read and also it allows you to get through the menus without too much trouble. You've got the standard uh, BMW switch gear with all the same buttons and layout as you'd normally expect. And so there's things like cruise control over here, heated grips, you've got the option anyway of the emergency SOS button. Uh, the three riding modes I talked about, uh, lean sensitive traction control and ABS, hill start controls an option, a USB port down on the side and a 12 volt down there keyless although you do have to use the key to deploy the steering lock but yeah it has to be said it's got plenty in terms of that tech side of things could be a plus for some others maybe not so bothered you might want something that feels a bit more in keeping with the style and riding experience of the bike like you get with the kawasaki z900 rs or the uh, triumph speed twin even that bike's a lot more simple than this but look, there's options there and quite a lot of it you have to pay extra for. And so you can either spec it up or stick with the minimal tech package and the simpler, more analog looking clocks. Now onto the visual side of things. And in my opinion, this bike has taken a little bit of a step up. The new tank shape looks great to me. And there's been a huge neatening up of the back part of the bike, which used to look a little bit too busy. Everything is a little more cohesive, which I like. And it looks as though there's a touch more attention to detail on some of the hardware. In fact, overall, this bike is really nicely finished, probably the best amongst its immediate competition, just in terms of the quality of the materials, how it feels to the touch, and things like the switch gear. So look, it's fast, fun to ride, handles nicely, is a looker too. So what's not to like? Well, we still don't have a fuel gauge on this bike. It might not be a big deal to some, but at well over 14 grand, it might feel like it's missing one of the basics to others. And look, having redesigned the fuel tank for this new iteration, you would have thought a fuel gauge would have been high on the list of priorities. Speaking of which, there's also a couple of litres less fuel than the previous generation, although I would say 16 litres is still fairly manageable for this style of bike. And then the last little niggle is the steering lock, which can be a bit fiddly. Probably something you get used to after a few days or weeks of ownership, but it still feels like it could have been designed in a more intuitive way. But look, I think the biggest negative at the moment on this bike is just the pricing. It's well over £14,000. And if you look at some of the competition, you're talking thousands more. And especially when you spec up some of the brilliant little extras that I've said I like so much, like the... Um, you know, the Option 719 finishing kit, the TFT dash, the quick shifter, you know, that price difference is gonna be even more substantial. And it does end up looking pretty steep. I will say, I think you're getting a little bit more for your money in some respects though. Like there's a lot more features available. Certainly the techie side of it, you feel like you're getting such a great quality of finish. All of the chassis hardware is, you know, where you'd expect it to be at this sort of price. But still, that is a big price difference. And for some people, maybe tricky to justify. And I think also looking at the previous generation R9T lineup, where there was multiple different price points, again, it might feel a bit exclusive uh, just to have this top dog and no option to come into the lineup you know, a few grand cheaper. Now, maybe that'll change. You know, the R90 Pure, for example, is like a slightly 
down-spec version of the top-tier previous-gen R9T. And so maybe we'll get that here as well, an R12 9T Pure, as well as some of the other models, you know, in between, like the Scrambler and the Urban GS, and they had the Cafe Racer version, the um, R90 Racer, a while back as well. Maybe we'll get a few of those in the middle of the lineup, but for now, you can sort of only judge it on what's available. And so, yeah, it's only this or the R12, which is under 12 grand, but it's a really different riding position. It's, um, you know, lowering the seat because it's got that cruiser style chassis. You've got the big 19 inch front wheel and the 16 at the rear, so it's much more stable, but less lively in the handling. Completely different thing really to ride. And so yeah, there isn't really, truly an affordable equivalent of this model. So those, in my opinion, are the key pros and cons of this new bike from BMW. But where does that leave it versus the competition? Well, I reckon it's right up there with the best in terms of looks, power, handling, features and build quality. And it's only really the price and the specific flavour of the Boxer Twin that would stop me from immediately recommending it. That makes it a question of personal taste and personal circumstances. But if you've enjoyed the Boxer Twin before, and this looks like it's in budget for you, then this one is firmly a must demo. As always though, I'd love to know which bike you'd pick, so do let me know down in the comments below. And also, I'll leave on the screen now one of my favourite variants of the previous gen R9 T, which is the Urban GS, which I made a review of a couple of years back and thoroughly enjoyed, so do check it out if you haven't already. Hit subscribe as well if you haven't already to see more motorcycle reviews like this. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you in the next video.